What's going on guys, this is King Torhill and we are doing a Kingdoms of Amalar Reckoning uh, character creation primer. Uh, this will take you through the four tiers of making a character in the upcoming game, Kingdoms of Amalar Reckoning, which is coming out uh, in the U.S. on February 7th, so just next week. Uh, first we'll start, uh, the first tier of it is your race selection, so we'll go through that. Uh, the race selection is the one that has the least amount of effect on your actual character but it's also the only one you cannot change later in the game uh, so it is very important uh, the, there are four races in the game the first one is the Almain uh, this one you get racial bonuses of persuasion plus one alchemy plus one and blacksmithing plus two uh, the next one is the Varani uh, here you get mercantile plus one lockpicking plus two detect hidden plus one the Yosefar, I'm probably butchering that, I apologize. Uh, you get Dispelling plus two, Alchemy plus one, and Sagecraft plus one. And the Dokalfar, you get Persuasion plus one, Sagecraft plus one, and Stealth plus two. So there you can kind of see the basics uh, for the tunes. Uh, the first one, the Almain, more of maybe a melee type, heavy armor with the blacksmithing. And down to the duckle far, where you can get the uh, your stealth uh, advantage. So you're gonna have your rogues and stuff like that if you're gonna uh, go with a typical class. Once you pick your race, you will then be able to pick your uh, your overriding sign. Uh, there are some choices, to, six choices to choose from. Uh, the first one is fire, which will provide a plus six percent fire damage and plus six percent fire resistance. Next is Wisdom, which will give you 10% extra mana. War, 5% physical damage, 5% armor. Order, 5% uh, health, 5% mana. Justice, a 10% health bonus. And then you can pick None, which you'll get a 1% experience bonus uh, for your character. The next tier of the character creation is your skills or profession type uh, points. Uh, you'll get to distribute your points into nine different professions and uh, we'll go through each of those right quick uh, the top one alchemy alchemy grants you the ability to harvest mystical regions from the land and combine them to create powerful arcane potions blacksmithing allows you to repair your arms and armor as they become worn and damaged as well as, as forge entirely new equipment detect hidden enables you to find hidden treasure deadly traps enemy ambushes and secret doors dispelling grants you the ability to dispel per protective magical wards without suffering harm. Lockpicking grants you mastery over picking of mechanical locks, enabling you to bypass even the tightest security. Mercantile, uh, you master the art of selling for more and buying for less. Persuasion allows you to talk your way into and out of a situation that would normally require a different solution. Sagecraft allows you to create powerful gems and fuse them into socketed equipment. Stealth allows you to sneak around undetecting undetected granting combat bonuses when you attack unseen. Uh, so a lot of those are pretty standard for RPGs. Uh, generally it's better to focus on one or two of these and uh, build them up instead of being well balanced in my opinion. Uh, the one thing I do want to, I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, uh, but there's little symbols here. Uh, when you click on, when you get to one with a symbol, that actually has a tangible bonus. Like if I was to put my point into blacksmithing, I'd be able to salvage infrequent equipment. Uh, if you we were doing detect hidden, uh, and I put four points into detect hidden, I could then disarm traps. So there's actual tangible bonuses to go along with your tune, not just increases X amount of percent or uh, that. There's actual tangible bonuses that you can plan for and try to get uh, in developing your character. The third tier is our combat bonuses, uh, or combat uh, skill point trees. Uh, you'll be able to put points every time you level up into different trees. Uh, we'll go through each of those right quick. The first one, uh, Might. Uh, this is your melee type, melee defense, armor, uh, axes, swords type uh, tree. The next one is Finesse. This is your archers, daggers, stealthy, traps, poison type tree. And sorcery uh, is obviously your, your elemental magic type tree. Uh, so you're able to put points in. Uh, once you hit five points into a tier, uh, you'll be able to move up to the next tier in the, in the same tree. Uh, so five points. If you wanted quake, you need to have five points into 
the first tier and etc. Uh, the one thing is you don't have to put all your points into one tree. You don't have to pick might. You can switch around. And the other level that I think adds a lot of depth to it is each skill has a point value to it. So it's not just, okay, you pick this skill and now you have that skill. Uh, if you put more points into the skill, you have more powerful. Uh, you have a more powerful spell. So you can choose between either having lots of weaker spells or just a few really, really strong spells. And uh, really allows you to have a lot of variety in how you want to play your character. The final tier of character creation uh, comes in picking your destiny. Uh, from here, when you first start, you'll be able to pick one of three destinies. The Brawler melee type, where you'll get a 15% melee attack damage and 10% block efficiency. The Acolyte, you'll get 15% elemental damage or 10 per and 10% mana cost reduction. Rogue, you get 10% ranged attack, 30% damage resistance while dodging, and 5% piercing damage bonus. But that'll kind of put you in one of your basic tiers but from there you're able to pick a new destiny uh, every certain number of levels based on how many points you put into your combat skill trees so if you're doing all might skill tree you'll be able to pick uh, from the might tree and eventually if you put all your points into might you'll be able to get the warlord destiny and that will give you some really big bonuses and also give you the ability of last stand which will automatically resurrect you with 20% health uh, if you were to die. Uh, but you don't. It, there's tons of destinies. You don't have to just pick one of the uh, like might, finesse, or sorcery. Uh, there's combo destinies. Like if you wanted to make like a battle mage type thing, you could do a might sorcery combination and actually have battle mage on there, um, which also gives you bonuses uh, based on if you have an equal number or a near equal number of points in both of the two separate trees. So it, it kind of makes you balance, you know, do I want to put all my points in might or do I want to put, you know, if I'm putting some points to supplement my might in the sorcery tree, you know, I need a certain number to get to this destiny. So it kind of kind of makes you think on how you want to build your character. You know, if there's an ability you really want in one of these, then you know, you're going to have to put those points into sorcery even if you're mainly might or vice versa. Uh, there's even uh, destinies for if you have equal points over all three trees, uh, which will allow you to, uh, you know, you still get bonuses for that. So that's, you know, it's really, really cool. It allows you a lot of different ways to play and really doesn't box you in. Uh, all of this stuff can be changed. Uh, you can visit a Faith Weaver at any time and anything other than your race can be changed so you can start all over uh, lets you be free and experiment it's not like a game like Skyrim where you're locked into your perks uh, so you know if you spent that skill point on smithing because you were gonna make a melee character and then you realized magic was awesome and you you know and now you've got that point in smithing that you're just stuck with uh, that's what happened to me on uh, one of my tunes in Skyrim so uh, you are able to reset you are able to experiment so I think there's a lot of options to make some really cool classes uh, in this game. Oh, that's it for the walkthrough. Uh, we went through the four tiers, so hopefully this will get you ready for uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, and we can see uh, get you a little get you where you want to put your character at and how you want to build your character. Uh, so that's it, guys. Uh, take care and uh, like up the video and leave some comments for me. Uh, that'd be great.